Now, I'm very confident 100 years from now we won't have an FCC. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie for Reason TV, and today we're talking with Tom Hazlett. He's a, a longtime Reason contributor. He's a professor of law and economics at George Mason University, and we're talking about net neutrality. Tom, thanks for talking with us. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about net neutrality. You uh, wrote uh, recently a uh, Encounter Books broadside about net neutrality. We uh, at Reason write a lot about net neutrality. We tend to be against it, mm -hmm. and uh, we always have trouble actually defining it. We're just against it anyway. But <laughs> what is net neutrality, and why is it something that is uh, problematic, the way that it's being discussed in the policy right. arena? Network neutrality is a set of rules, uh, which, by the way, are difficult to define but they generally have to do with regulating the business model that your local ISP uses. So you have an internet service provider, it might be Verizon or Comcast, um, Earthlink, there's some other ones, and uh, they give you a connection to the internet. The idea of net neutrality is that they should only provide you a connection to the internet. Now, there may be some other things that they do, they might give you some ancillary services. Uh, for example, your cable company might give you telephone service as well, but they should keep that separate and they should use their internet connection uh, as though it were uh, an open highway that any company could use, including themselves, uh, to provide those other services. And, and now, I mean, the way that this typically gets talked about is you say somebody like Comcast, which also provides content or creates content, it, you know, you get a Comcast connection, they're going to allow Comcast material to get to you quicker, or they might even block stuff, say, from Time Warner right. or a competitor. Why, uh, you know, why shouldn't uh, we say, no, you know, or why shouldn't the law say, no, Comcast should have, uh, you know, they should just be letting us plug in and get whatever we want when we want. Because the government has no idea what the optimal business model is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, last night I went on to see a baseball game and I was on ESPN and they said, watch here. Mm -hmm. So I clicked on and then it turns out that it said you have to have uh, one of these four internet providers to be able to get the content, okay? So in that case, it's ESPN, which is not an internet service provider, right. they, they're a content uh, provider, and they sell their content, not directly to me, the customer, uh, but to the ISP, mm -hmm. and they want those deals. That's, that's where the content wants to go. Mm -hmm. The irony of the net neutrality policy is it's advocated as though it's protecting all the folks on the edge of the network, like the content and application providers, who aren't the transport uh, infrastructure, like the ISPs, and that they're protecting them to get into the market. But that's not true. That is, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a story, but it turns out not to be relevant to the actual facts of the world. How many instances do we have that are documented where Comcast or Time Warner or Verizon right. is actually throttling certain Well, this is one of the problems. Sites. If you actually read the, the regulations the FCC put into place, in uh, the end of uh, 2010, uh, they don't have actual evidence that this is happening. They, they claim to, they have a couple of scare stories. Uh, there was a complaint lodged against one of these mega corporations that's dominating the broadband market, who, you know, whether that be Comcast or Verizon or Time Warner Cable, it was Metro PCS. And uh, what did they do that was egregious and anti-competitive? Well, they have uh, a couple of different levels of service and they're uh, older service, they allow customers to get all they want for voice, texting, and data, but because it's an older and fairly slow system, they can't do video streaming. In fact, video streaming is blocked so the network doesn't clog. They actually knew that video would be a little bit of a problem because YouTube is so damn popular. So they went to Google, owner of YouTube, and said, look, is there any way you can compress your signals so that we can actually make this work on our old, what they call a two and a half G network. And Google said, sure, we're, we're the smartest people on the planet, we'll fix that. And they came back to him and said, here, use this compression technique and uh, you know, get crazy. For that, they're violating neutrality, okay? So that, that runs frontally into exactly the argument that many economists have made that you want the market to compete and invent business models. You don't want the government to mandate some kind of a platform when they don't know what the, uh, really the efficient configuration so is. So Reason interviewed Michael Powell, Bush's FCC commissioner, years ago, and one of the things that he said was, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense to have uh, print media and, or, and cable media or certain, and internet media being uh, fully afforded protections under the First Amendment and broadcast content in a, in a different uh, regime, and that at some point these have to merge because people do not 
uh, access their content in, in the same way that they're being regulated. And he felt that one, in the future, there would be one standard, and it would either be the First Amendment or it would be a kind of namby-pamby uh, government regulation of content. Yeah. Uh, is, that, is he right about that, and are you confident that the First Amendment would win that battle? Uh, yes, and I think in 100 years from now, I'm very confident in 100 years from now, we won't have an FCC, okay. Um, and the question is, you know, how much sooner than 100 years can we make this happen? And uh, I would say, as you know, with respect to Michael Powell, I mean, it, that's uh, an interesting that Reason would, would interview him. Um, Powell's a great example that, uh, Powell's a very bright guy, and he, he sees a lot of, of, of what a chairman of the FCC should see. I mean, he's, he's perceptive. Uh, but it's, it's the structure. He was not able to move the, the commission forward uh, in most of the areas that count. We will uh, need to uh, talk when, in 100 years from now when the FCC no longer exists. I hope that the United States does, but uh, <laughs> you know, that's a crapshoot too. I'll put it on my Google calendar. I want to thank uh, Tom Hazlett of George Mason University, law and economics professor for talking with Reason TV. Thanks very much. I'm Nick Gillespie.